This video will serve as a quick introduction to the new Panasonic AG DVX200 4K camcorder. Starting from the front, we're going to make a tour of the camera. The lens cap is integrated to the lens hood, so controlled by this switch here. Then the lens itself has three rings on it. So you've got the large ring in the front is focus, the middle ring is for zoom, and the smallest ring is for the iris. Now the zoom can be controlled either truly manually or through the zoom rockers on the camera body. If you want to go into manual control, use this switch here. Set it to manual, you have full manual control. Set to automatic, you can use the power zoom. Moving on to this section of the lens, we have a number of buttons and switches that control how the camera exposes and focuses. So you have your physical neutral density filters. We have a button that toggles between manual and automatic iris control. So this is for your automatic exposure or switching to manual mode. Then you have a focus assist control that brings up either the magnified focus assist or focus in red or blue or yellow, whatever color you choose, or both. You can combine them together. Then you have a selector switch for how you want the camera to focus, either automatic or manual focus. And you also have the ability to set the camera instantly to infinity focus by pushing the switch down. And finally, we have a button for push auto. That's if you're in manual focus control and you wanna be able to just invoke autofocus to focus on whatever's on the screen at the time, you can tap that button once and it'll take over focus and lock in that focus. The display and mode check switch controls the display of overlays and graphics on your LCD screen. The gain switch for increasing the amount of electronic gain, you can set it to low, medium, or high, and you can control in the menus exactly how much gain is applied from each position of that switch. The white balance switch has three positions. At the bottom it's set to the preset, so you can toggle between daylight and tungsten presets using the AWB button here on the front of the camera. You can press that and it will toggle between those, or also a variable white balance where you can actually dial in exactly the color temperature that you want to use. Or you can set the switch up to channel A or B. Those are two separate channels for manually white balancing the camera. And to do a manual white balance, you're going to want to place a white card in the scene in front of your subject so it's lit by the light that's hitting your subject. And then zoom the camera in all the way so that it's filling the screen with that white object. And then press the AWB button here in the front of the camera and it'll take a manual white balance and it will configure the, the internal processing so that that card looks white and your colors will be rendered accurately. Next, we have a number of user buttons. These user buttons, we're gonna talk more about the functions that these control in another video, but just so you know where they are, there's four user buttons here and in the back of the camera, three more user buttons. Continuing on, we have a menu button and a jog wheel. So if you're used to using a broadcast camera, you're used to knowing that you have a menu button and a jog wheel, this works the same way. The menus can also be accessed by the touch screen. However, if you're using the viewfinder instead of the touch screen, there's no touch screen. So you have to use the menu and wheel to access that. Plus you have a shutter button. Now this is an important button because first of all, the shutter button is what allows you to set the shutter speed. You toggle the shutter button and then you use the wheel to dial in exactly what shutter speed you want. Or it can toggle between automatic shutter and manual shutter. So you're going to want to definitely know if your camera is an automatic shutter and you don't want that, press the shutter button again and it'll take you back to manual control. We have three user buttons that are pre-programmed with certain functions. So we have your zebras your optical image stabilizer, and the waveform monitor. And you can configure the zebras. You have two layers of zebras. You have the optical image stabilizer. It can be either a hybrid or normal optical stabilizer or off. And as far as the waveform monitor goes, you can choose to toggle through the waveform monitor, the vector scope, or turning them off. In the red section of the camera, we have the recording slots. Slide that panel back and you reveal two SDHC or SDXC card recording slots. And you have your audio controls. Behind this door, you can configure your two audio channels to come from either the onboard microphone or the XLR inputs or a combination of those, or to have both channels come from one XLR if you have only one microphone and you wanna send that to both channels. You can choose whether you wanna send phantom power to the XLR inputs, and you can choose whether you want the audio levels controlled manually with these potentiometers, with these wheels, or automatically, so it can do automatic level control. On the back of the camera, fairly obvious, you have your battery port here, 
an HDMI, and you have two USB ports for a host and device. So you can set the camera up to be a USB card reader, or you can set it to actually take control of a USB hard drive and copy the contents of its memory cards onto that hard drive, or have it play back footage that's already on a hard drive. And on this side of the camera, we have our audio and video connectors. So you have your SDI output. This sends HD. It does not send 4K or UHD. You can only get those through the HDMI port. But it does send HD up to 1080-60p or standard def. You have the time code preset in and out port for synchronizing time code with another camera or device. And you have a standard def output, which can be used when you're shooting standard def. You can output composite analog video through that port. You have your headphone jack up here. This is where the headphones go. You also have an audio out jack, but you don't want to put your headphones in, in this audio out jack. It will work, but you'll hear an echo because the audio is, output is delayed to match the video output, whereas in the headphone jack, it's processed live. So for monitoring with headphones, definitely use the headphone jack. And lastly, you have your DC power port. The power port is outside the battery compartment. This means you can power the camera using external power supply, and you can have a battery in there simultaneously. So if the power goes out or someone kicks the power cord out, the battery will instantly take over and keep the camera running. Or if you need to swap batteries and still have the camera running, you could temporarily dock in the AC power, then swap out the battery, and then undock and keep going. So the AC power being outside is, is a great feature. For recording audio, you have two XLR ports. The main one up here, this is channel one, and your secondary port down here, this is channel two. You have a zoom rocker here. This is the main zoom rocker, and this is variable speed. The harder you press it, the quicker the lens zooms. And up here, you have a fixed speed rocker. So if you want just a very, very slow creep zoom or a reasonably fast zoom all at once, you can get that through this top setting. You also have that eighth user button. It's called rec check. It's up here, but you can reassign that. So when we're referencing user button eight, that's this button up here. That completes our tour of the outside of the camera, but stay tuned for the next video where I'll be introducing the menu systems. And I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. Panasonic.